Welcome to Slasher Sunday. So, for the next four weeks in succession, I will be tackling the Hatchet franchise for Slasher Sunday. So, one tonight, two next week, and so on. You guys are smart people. You know what I mean. All right, time to talk about the Adam Green franchise, Hatchet, starring Victor Crowley. Or... Kane Hodder as Victor Crowley, but yeah, Victor Crowley, this is the horror icon, slasher icon. We don't have a lot of them in modern, you know, times, in the in the 2000s. I mean, how many slasher icons are there? I can name very few, very, very few from 2000 up, very few. So this is one, and... Uh, I saw the poster for this outside a theater many years ago. I don't even remember what year this is. This is 2007. So 12 years ago, um, I, I saw the poster and it said old school American horror on it. And I was like, what the hell is that? So I went and I, I looked it up online and I saw it was an 80s slasher throwback kind of thing with practical effects and Kane Hodder, Tony Todd, and Robert Englund, and I was like, holy shit, and this is, this is well before people were doing the throwback type movies. Now they're just rampant, now they're everywhere. And I'm of two minds on the whole 80s throwback thing. On one hand, I love it, and it is my style, and it is what got me into horror, and it's what I gravitate towards and all this. But then, of course, on the almost conflicting hypocritical side, even though you know I always support those films when they go to the homage throwback style, there is that other part of me that's like, okay, I get it, and it's cool, and I like that you're wearing your influences on your sleeve and all that, but if you're... At, okay, let's just say, if you're going to do it, at least reinvent it. At least, you know, um, expand upon it. Try new things. Don't just do a full blown homage. That is boring as fuck. And I could for that'll that'll work for maybe 15, 20 minutes before the viewer gets onto your shtick and is like, oh, so you're just gonna go full blown homage here the whole time. We're not gonna get anything else. Awesome. Lame. Um So this one I saw I don't think I saw this in theaters. I don't remember. I know what happened with Hatchet 2. I know I did not see that in theaters. I'll save that story for when it, when I when I review that one next week. What bullshit that was. I, I did try to go see it in theaters, but we'll get there. Um, this one, I don't think so. I think I got this on DVD. And I, en I really enjoyed it. And, the, and a big reason of why I enjoyed it was the kills. The kills are great. John Carl Buechler, freaking, you know... Uh, creature effects uh, special effects wizard who also directed freaking Friday the 13th part 7 and Troll and he, he was a legend of horror and I uh, saw that he was doing this, the special effects in this and I was like oh wow that, that's that's pretty badass right there and man did it live up to it the, the kills in this some of the kills in this are just amazing um, some of my favorite kills of the last two decades. I mean, it, there is some fucking amazing ones. And you have Victor Crawley. I mean, how many horror icons are in the 2000s? How many? I can think of almost none. So, I mean, it, it, there are some, but so few. Um, all right, so this movie starts off and we've got horror alums Robert Englund and Joshua Leonard from the Blair Witch Project. And they're out there, and they are hunting for a gator. And uh, Victor Crawley comes and kills them. Now, England's death is a, um, a found body aftermath kill, which, if you're going to do an aftermath kill, you've got to make it absolutely brutal. Like, the aftermath kills... If you only see the aftermath, it should be an absolute, like, 
obliteration of the body. Like there should just be parts or it should be mangled in a, like in a unique way or, or stuck up in some kind of insane position. Something that makes it memorable. But to just have a guy dead and like his innards pulled out or something, it's just, it's kind of lame. Um, and then Leonard's character is, is pushed down and like his arm is ripped off, I think. And then his like intestine, his like back is pulled out and there's like blood hitting the trees and all that. It's not the best kills to start on. They're fine. Like they're good because, you know, would I rather have that or a, a cutaway? Of course, I'm going to take this all day. I'm going to take the getting to see the kill but they're not that inventive. They're not that cool. And yeah, you don't want to blow your whole lot wad at once, but this is your opening. This is where you set the mood. This is where you set the tone. This is where you set the precedence of what's going, you know, what what's to come. So I think this would have been a good place for a really great kill. And they're both good. They're not awesome. And I just felt like it could have started stronger, but you do have two horror legends. I just, you know, the best kill in the movie, I think you definitely want to save for much later in the film. You know, build up to your best work. But, I don't know. There's something about these first two kills just kind of like, hmm, that's okay. That was, that was fine. That was good. I mean, I hope the rest of this movie isn't like that. I hope it's better than that. And it does. It, it goes there. But anyway. Um, then it starts with Marilyn Manson, uh, much like Blair Witch, Book of Shadow, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, which was actually originally supposed to start with Frank Sinatra's Witchcraft. Um, watch Good Bad Flicks Breakdown on Blair Witch 2 because you're sitting there going, that movie sucks. It doesn't, okay? It doesn't. And I've defended that movie since 2000 when it came out. We're not here to talk about fucking Blair Witch 2, but yeah, there you go. All right. Um, so what is <laughs> i've gotten actually a decent amount of shit for this lately i don't care at all so people could just stop commenting about this kind of stuff but i've gotten a lot of t i've gotten a decent amount of shit about talking about tits on the channel get out of here this is a fucking horror channel for slasher fans slasher fans love gore and they love tits and if you don't want to hear about it fuck off from my channel okay i'm going to talk about tits all I want. I'm going to talk about gore all I want. If you don't like those things, why the fuck are you here? So stop complaining about my talk about tits. I don't give a shit. Delete yourself. I'm not going to do it for you. That said, so this movie has gore, absolutely, and it's a slasher flick. What else does it need? TNA. Where do they set this? Mardi Gras. Now, that said, this opening here, uh, you know, the opening credits where it's just cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. And there, there's girls flashing their tits and whatnot. There is a decent amount. Don't get me wrong. You probably see 10 pairs all together. One of them is outrageously amazing. And it's the one that they see last. The girls who's just sitting there up there and she's like waves to them while smoking a cigarette or what. She is stunning. <laughs> She's an absolute stunning piece of artwork. Holy shit. And if you think I'm talking about women as artwork is a bad thing, that's fuck off. That's. Oh, I hate even having to defend anything. It's so stupid. God, you just guys don't understand how much shit I get in comments all the time. And I go through every comment. I'm actually a fucking YouTuber that actually reads every single one of my comments. And I have to go another pussy, another whiny little bitch. Shut. Why are you in a horror channel? I just don't get it. Anyways, I think of women as equals. Believe it or not, I really do. But I also like their bodies. And guess what? They like men's. And it's okay. It's okay to look at a man and be like, wow, what an amazing piece of artwork. It's not, that's. All right. I'm not talking about it anymore. I'm done with that conversation, so. <sighs> All right. Um, but yeah, weirdly enough, I feel like there's not enough tits in the opening. Weirdly. Like, there's a decent amount, but it's like Mardi Gras. I thought it would just be tits 
friends. Tits, friends. Tits, tits, friends. Tits. Like it would just be an absolute avalanche of tits rolling at the screen. That, oh, yeah. Doesn't that sound amazing? Um, but yeah, so then they, they decide one of the friends is, is Adam Green himself. And uh, Ben here is talking to Marcus and, and his other buddies. And he's just like, hey, guys. I just broke up with my girlfriend and I'm a little whiny bitch and I don't want to look at tits anymore because it reminds me that my girlfriend's getting plowed by some dude who's all buff and I can't figure out why she would want to be with a guy who is an actual man and I'm some tall geek. Um, But yeah, he goes off and he convinces Marcus to go to a haunted swamp tour and the first door they knock on is the door of Tony Todd's character and his little story there I find to be pretty funny about how he's telling this ghost story potentially they think that's going to go somewhere and then he's just talking about some kid who sued him because he fell I thought that that was actually pretty funny the humor in this this movie is like 50 50 it is like a split straight down the middle horror comedy I legit couldn't tell you which one is more if I had to pick which one's a little more I'd go comedy. I guess it is a little more comedy, but there's a good amount of horror as well. The way the horror plays out, I think Victor Crawley is fucking great. I think he's absolutely the best part of this movie, and Kane's performance is him. You could be like, oh, well, Kane's just, it's just Kane. He's just going to give another Jason performance. He's nothing like Jason at all in this movie. Absolutely nothing like Jason. So to compare the two would be outrageous. The way Kane brings a presence to this character, I love the way he moves in this movie. Just the absolute, like, Hulk rage. He comes out and he's just... And he just shakes around. He's, like, putting his entire body into it. He's just so angry. It's like he just shot up 18 freaking vials of steroids into himself and he's just going absolute berserk. I love the way his movements are in this. It's so chaotic. It's just so filled with anger and frustration and murderous rage. And it's a fantastic performance. And that's just it. I've talked about this in the past with other horror icons. And it's like, it's just a silent, you know, a, a silent killer. It's just this guy in a mask or in makeup. And he just goes and he grabs people and he kills them. And people are like, anybody can do that. Bullshit. There's an art to this. And Kane Hodder kills it, pun intended, in this role. There's You couldn't have just hired any asshole off the street, some big hulking dude, and just thrown him in the Victor Crawley outfit. And he would have had the same performance as, as Kane does in this movie. Absolutely not. It's just, it's it's a great... It's a great performance from him. All right. Um, and then we get our two Bayou Beaver girls. And one of them is Amanda from the Adams Family movies. She plays the Girl Scout in the first one. And then the second one, she plays Amanda, a little bitch that Wednesday and Pugsley have to take down at that summer camp or whatever. I love those movies, man. Especially Adams Family Values. Um, freaking Joan Cusack and uh, the marriage of oh, such a fun movie uh, such a shame that they got like the best casting ever for that new Adams Family movie and it went animated I'm like why why wouldn't you have Oscar Isaac would you not make him a live action Gomez it's just baffling my mind like Ugh. I'm hoping that there will be like a meta moment in the movie where they actually like show them in their a human form or maybe it'll have like a spin-off where they actually do it live act. I don't know. Anyway, so obviously the Bayou Beavers is based Oh, I have the pen in my hand again. I'm a pretentious douchebag. I forgot about that guy. Oh my god, I am a pretentious douchebag. I didn't even realize it. There you go. It's put away. Actually I'm just gonna hold the fucking thing. You don't tell me what to do. Alright, anyways. Um, the Bayou Beaver thing is, uh, clearly based upon the Girls Gone Wild. I remember those videos late at night, you'd be up, and it was like porn for kids. You'd be up at like midnight, one in the morning, and you'd be watching freaking Jerry Springer or X-Files or some shit, and then boom, like right in the commercial break, 
it would it would have this music that would come in and this like real happy voice trying to sell you titties like cocaine and I was like there to do all the lines of it I was like just give it all I need an eight ball of titties I never did buy a Girls Gone Wild video, but I do remember a buddy or somebody had one and I threw it on and in the previews, like on TV, of course they just showed the hottest college co-ed girls who are like, you know, we love freaking drugs and premarital sex. and these girls are just so hot and so freaking amazing and then they black out their tits and they're like if you want to see these this was before Pornhub this was before any of that shit was available and so porn was scarce man it was dark days for the perverted you had to like steal shit from your brother's room or, or something um, and I just remember like watching it and yeah like the first girl that will come on the screen in the video will be like super smoking hot or like set that like nice tone kind of like what I was talking about earlier here see you put great tits up front put great kills up front the dudes over at girls gone wild and seem to know what to do but then it was like 30 minutes of girls that I personally didn't find all that attractive everyone has their own tastes but I was like ugh. Ooh, I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. Oh, no. Turn this fast forward, fast forward. And then, like, hot girl, you pause. You go, oh, rewind, rewind. She looked good. Fucking outrageous. Guys, it doesn't matter how many tits we see. I've always been enamored by that. Like, I don't even understand why I, why I like tits. And I don't understand why guys like them so much. They're, I mean, when you really think of them logically, they're not all that interesting. Like, they're just big fucking flesh bags filled with fat. Like... But for some reason, our brains are just wired in this way where we just we can't get enough of them. No matter how many times we see them, and even the same pair, it's just like every time, it's like Christmas. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. It's like that six-year-old kid comes back out and you're just opening it. <gasps> you got me titties for Christmas? It's just, it's wild. Okay, I think I've talked, I think because that person talked shit recently about like, oh my God, you talking about tits was just a little much for me. Well, guess what? I'm going to fucking pack it on. Now it's just going to be like titty grenades being thrown, man. Exploding areolas in your face. <sighs> These sound like such wonderful scenarios I keep throwing out there. It's just getting me excited. Okay, so yeah, Girls Gone Wild. Um, the whole like jokes between Ben and Marcus, I actually liked their friendship. I thought they were pretty funny. They're back and forth. The, you know, trying to uh, get back at his friend, you know, come up with some witty retort to to something like, "Well, you you're you're out of you're," and the guy's just like, "It's over." And then he tries to come back at him later, and he's like, "No, nah, it's too late." <laughs> that's that's good stuff. And then when he's telling him about the crabs, and he's like, "You don't you don't fucking like you don't hook up with girls who itch," or I can't remember exactly what he says there. But then the next girl scratches herself, and he's like, "Shit." There's some great comedy. And, oh, man, I'll tell you, the the, the tour guide um, played by, I have his name written down here. I'm not super familiar with the guy. I wrote it down somewhere in here. But, um, oh, shit. His performance in this is great. He plays three completely different uh, characters, essentially. He plays this, like, super, like, um almost like flamboyant, uh, over-the-top, uh, fake-ass salesman. And his, his accent is one thing. And then he goes into this like full-blown stereotype Asian guy. And then he goes into this like dude from Detroit. And each one of them is like him coming clean. Like, I remember seeing that in the trailer where he's like, Guys, I'm going to be really honest with you. Like, I think that's so funny. And I think his performance in this, and of course he comes back for the next one as the brother or whatever. Um, I think he's I think he's fantastic in this movie. Uh, he's really, really funny. And I'll find his name eventually as I go through my, my notes more here. But good stuff from him. Um, and... <laughs> the, the 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 couple okay so the old dude and his wife the dude that's in like joe dirt that i've mentioned a few times um he goes out 
and he tries to cross and he gets bit by a gator and then he runs and then they're trying to take him and they find the house and Mary Beth tells the story who is of course then replaced by Daniel Harris in the next movie because I'm a continuity whore I would have preferred this girl she's I like her in this a lot I actually prefer her to Daniel Harris even though I love Daniel Harris I feel like Daniel Harris trying to play her with the accent is is just bad acting from Daniel Harris and I'm not I love Daniel Harris man but it just it doesn't work as well I, I wish this girl would have came she's a beautiful girl I like her acting I like her performance I would have preferred her to come back and have Daniel Harris play a different role in the movie fucking put Daniel Harris if you can get Daniel Harris in a horror movie you always put her in and she's freaking fantastic. And I'm not saying she's a bad actress. I just think her... We'll get to that in Hatchet too, Because her freaking performance in uh, Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. As much as you guys may not like or whatever. I think she's fucking phenomenal in that. So, you know. But maybe we'll disagree. Maybe I'll watch Hatchet 2 again here soon in 3. And, and be like, oh wait. She's actually better than I thought. I don't think so. But I would have preferred this girl. Just continuity's sake anyway. Alright. Um... And then, so we get these flashbacks of the deformed kid. Oh, I was going somewhere with that before. She tells the story of the deformed kid, and Kane plays the dad. And it's really this sad story, almost... Um, I was going to equate it to something, but now I'm going to take that back, because that's not how this... I think it... Pumpkinhead 2, right? That's similar-ish. Where, because in Pumpkinhead 1, it's just this kid who dies and then it's just a demon. But in the second one, it's like some kid who's bullied, who's like crippled or something. And they like throw him down a well or, God, it's been a little while. I, I reviewed it maybe two years ago. Uh, Blood Wings. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so Kane Hodder plays the dad, which I thought was pretty cool. And then I actually saw in the uh, IMDb listings that the, the deformed little kid was actually played by a girl. And I'm pretty sure the girl's pretty hot now. She don't look like that kid. Um, and of course, the deformed kid. You're thinking, oh, it's just Jason all over again. Well, he gets burned. So it's like a Jason Freddy mix with like Hulk rage. It's, it's a whole mixture of things. But I like that whole backstory. And then getting back to where I was going with that couple. Their deaths are amazing. Just awesome, awesome shit. I love their death so damn much. So, um, the, fir uh, the first one, it, uh, the best one in the freaking movie, in my opinion. I think this is pretty much everyone's. Although, I guess the belt sander could be other people's favorites. But him, okay, so he cuts the dude in half, chops him here. The dude completely falls in half. Amazing. That's brutal. That's beautiful. It's awesome. But then just grabbing the wife's head, ah, and yanking her head open and back is mwah, just beautiful. Oh, it's such a freaking amazing hit. That's where I was in the film, and I was enjoying it. I don't like too much comedy, and I wasn't loving it, but I was actually enjoying the comedy a lot more this time. It actually was landing for me this time as to where a lot of the times before, I've maybe seen this three or four times, it wasn't as much, but I actually did enjoy the humor a decent amount in this time, um, which ho is hopeful for the next few movies in the franchise, because I was kind of having the same problem with those. So, like, Adam Green's uh, style of, like, comedy wasn't exactly lining up with mine. It's a little too on the nose, a little too childish, but not childish enough, or something, you know? Um, but this time I dig. I, I dig it. I dig it. I dug it. Um... And then I like that Marcus just runs away and just like goes straight up a tree like a scared cat. Um, and then the Bayou Beaver guy who ends up being a fraud and uh, freaking the girl from um, uh, Adam's family is like, it's the third time this has happened to me. But he gets the full three sex, the three sex. Wow. I'm hard up, guys. Jesus Christ. Talking about all these titties. The 360 neck turn and then rip off decapitation. Pretty cool. A pretty cool death. Um, uh, Doug, that's right, Doug, Doug, Doug. Uh, Doug's aftermath, his body that they find looks mangled. See, that's a good looking aftermath body. And then we get the belt sander to the other Bayou Beaver girl's face. 
Uh, that girl's pretty damn attractive. She's the prettier of the two, in my pr opinion. Not that the blonde isn't an attractive girl. She just isn't. But this girl's prettier, in my opinion. But, man, she does not look all that pretty once her once her freaking uh, chin has been taken off her body. She kind of looks like the uh, hitchhiker in Creepshow 2 at that point when he's, but she's a ride lady, and he's, like, bleeding all over her. Oh, so good. Um, but, yeah, man. Not only does she get this whole part of her face belt sandered off. I don't know how you'd go through the bone in that, but whatever. It's a movie. Um, Mary Beth comes and stops him. And this chick just has to crawl around in absolute agony. Then the uh, tour guide has his leg chopped off and his head is decapitated. It rolls away and then it's stuck in the ground. He takes the chick up and it pales her on the shovel awesome double kill there that was like a sex double impalement but done more creatively um and all right let's see where else are we at um i like that misty's death isn't really shown but the aftermath is cool because he just takes pieces of what we know is misty because of how much how um um, obvious or, or, uh, fucking what's the goddamn word I'm trying to think of here. This is stupid. I hate, that's why filming things in one take is, is, is always interesting because you, you want to flow and you want to come up to these works. Recognizable, Jason, recognizable. There's the word. Her, her outfit, her shirt is so recognizable that when a torso is thrown at the guy with, with her shirt on it, you're like, Oh, I guess Misty's dead. I guess Misty's been torn apart. That was the, that was great. Um, and her arms thrown out. He just takes like pieces. He's just carrying pieces of her around, and he's just throwing it like it's a snowball fight. That's great stuff. Um, and then so there does there there. I guess they're thinking. So he was burned. So the only way to put him to rest is by burning him again. I mean, do you burn Freddy because he's been burned? I mean, it doesn't work. And it wouldn't have killed him anyways. Even if they burned him, at least I don't think. Because I think he's all... Like, at the end of this... At the end of the second one, spoiler for the second one, she blows his entire head off. And then in the, you know... And then in the third one, he's just back. Like, immediately. Like, he, he just repeats. Like, as soon as he dies, he just comes back instantly. So, you can't kill the guy, no matter what. Um... And, um, so, uh, Marcus's arms are ripped off, which, yeah, it'd be painful, and eventually you probably would bleed out, but I guess he's just laying there bleeding out, because that wouldn't kill you instantly. Um, and so, so, Ben gets stuck in the foot, because Crowley's like a javelin thrower, uh, he freaking has perfect aim, hits him in the foot. And then he pushes the 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 spike forward. It impales Crowley, and then I guess he just tears his foot back and completely rips his whole foot out doing that. It was like she just pulls it and it just comes out. I'm like, wow, that that must have hurt. It just looked like a how could that possibly be? So then they get in the boat to to get out into the lay or the swamp. It kind of reminded me, of course, of. Uh, Friday the 13th part one um, and then they get out there in the boat and she is knocked into the water and she sees an arm which that and this is a thing where it's like because I know that's Crawley holding a severed arm do I know to look for how dead that arm is but it just is so blatantly obvious and as I said I don't know how to how to you know, take myself out of that, the knowledge of what I'm about to see. So it's hard to be unbiased on that, but it, it's so clearly a dead hand. It's so clearly like this hand just lazily comes in. There's no extension of the fingers. There's no reaching for her. It's just like a dead hand in the water and she grabs it and he pulls her up and he's just like, ah, and she looks over and he, and Ben's just dying and he's like, oh, got no arm. And she's, he's just screaming in the face and then just hard cut credits fucking brilliant great ending to this movie and i love that part two and that picks up right there in that moment 
except for now it's Daniel Harris, so she looks a little different. But regardless, like that's such a freaking great way to end this movie. It's just ah, hard cut credits. Good stuff, man. Really, really good stuff on the ending there. So overall, a really solid slasher. One of the best of the 2000s, for sure. So, all right, we'll cover Hatchet 2 next week. Um, yeah, tits, tits, tits. That's pretty much the summary of this video. Oh, man. Adios.